do a quick video. The reason I want to do this quick video is because of this. Now, a lot of people say, well, Jesus is not the father. You can see people saying things like this, like uh, this person, Renee. For us. But they're saying that Jesus is the father because they misunderstand. He says, uh, I am the father. Okay. So she's saying, they're saying that Jesus is the father. They misunderstand. Okay. Well, actually, I don't misunderstand. You go to Revelation 21, 9. It says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which hath the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talk with me, saying, Come hither, I will show ye the bride, right? The bride, the lamb's wife. Now, when he shows him the bride, the lamb's wife, who is this? Who's the bride of the lamb's wife? Who's, I'm sorry. Who's the bride? The lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit, right? Flesh and blood can inherit, flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom of God. So great spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem. Okay? So we know now that the bride, the lamb's wife, is the great city, the new holy Jerusalem. Okay? Now, you go to Galatians 4.26, it says, But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, is the mother of us all. Now, guys, I don't know how it works in your house, but if the Lamb's bride is mother of us all, that would make the Lamb the Father. Now, we know that the man, Jesus Christ, the mediator between God and man, had no, was not married and had absolutely no children. So apparently this must be talking by spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. You must be born again, Nicodemus. And if we click into this verse, you just go up and it tells you, but he that was born after the bond one was born after the flesh. But he that was born after the free one was born by promise. So it's saying after you heard and believe the gospel of your salvation, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit promise. You must be born again. So it explains to us that it's talking about people who are born again, right? By the spirit. Okay. By the spirit that's why god used twins like jacob and esau jacob believed esau didn't abraham isaac jacob believed the gospel and apparently when you believe the gospel you are born again okay so that proves this verse right here there's no contradiction now there's jesus who's the husband and in a home the way it works biblically is the husband is the head of the bride. The husband is the head of the wife, right? Right. The husband is the head of the wife. He's the head of the body, right? Even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body, right? right? The savior of the body. So it's equating what? The head of the wife, the wife is the what? Body and the wife carries what? Has the children, right? So there's the husband who's head of his wife who has his what? Children, who is mother of us all who are born again, okay? Very clear verse, right? So that's why that's a godly household, the household of God, and Jesus is the head, the husband is the God head. He is the I am. He's not a creature. He is without father, without mother, without descent, right? Because it's the spirit of adoption, right? Without descent, having neither beginning of days nor what? End of life. Well, Jesus, the man, the mediator between God of man and man, of the flesh of Mary and David, he is a creature. That is a creature, right? That's a creature created from Mary, right? That was a, he was a baby. He grew in knowledge and stature and wisdom, right? That's not Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever. That was a man who grew in knowledge. And in fact, he said there's things he didn't even know. So if it's Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever, you're saying there's a Jesus who's going to keep growing, who doesn't know things, who died is either okay when you die do you is he alive and dead forever at the same time no is he made to be sin for us forever no okay so that's the man jesus christ that's not god who's the head that's not the lamb who's the the god of the living right not the dead so it's saying here nor end of life but made like unto the son of god so he's made like unto the Son of God, but he is the Father because he, right, he is married to the bride 
who is mother of us all. Okay? Abide at the priest continually. He's the head of the body. He's the head of, of the body. And so the body is called the first fruit. So there's Jesus who's the head, and he has sons that who are plural who come in his name, and they're called But now is Christ risen from the dead. See, these are new creatures and become the first fruits, plural, of how many? Them that slept. That's why you're baptizing in the name. Name, not names of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Because the Father sent his word, and as many as received the word, sanctify, sanctify me by thy word. Thy word is truth gave you the power to become the sons of God. And then once they're done that, they're sealed by the Holy what? Ghost, right? Right? And so first fruits of them, that's the plural. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So there's the head, husband, right? The Godhead, head of the household. There's the bride who carries the children, who are the first fruits, that's the plural. And then there's the man, Jesus Christ, Okay. Now, the Bible says, you know, people will say, well, why is he, he, Jesus is not the father. Well, it's funny. He says, come in my I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not. If another come in his own name, him ye will receive. Very clear verse. So, that's what name did you come in? Your father's name. Then he says, the comforter. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name. What's your name? My name is Jesus. You come in whose name? I come in my father's name. Okay, so if you come in your father's name and your name is Jesus and the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the Father is going to send in your name. What's the name of the Father? Well, I come in my Father's name. What's your name? My name is Jesus. Oh, and Jesus is the Lamb who has a bride, who is a holy city, New Jerusalem, who is... Let's just look it up. Who is free is mother of us all. Now, if he's mother of us all and it says, call no man father on earth. Just want to make sure. Call no man your father up on the earth for one is your father, which is in heaven. Okay. So if there's one who's our father who's in heaven and there's one God the Bible confirms and says, but to us there is but one God, the Father, in whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So we are in the body of Christ, but we have our Father, who's the head of household, the God head of household. And so the head is from everlasting to everlasting. That's the I am. The bodies are new creatures. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, right? Old things have passed away. All things are become new. And it says, we have borne the image Let's just look at it. As we have borne the image of the earthy, right? The children, my children, my, my kingdom is not of this world. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Let us, if any man be in Christ, let us, it's God that worketh in you to do his good will and pleasure. We are new, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Let us create man in our image. The image of God is the image of the heavenly because we have one father who is in heaven, right? We don't have an earthly father. In fact, just to prove to you, the Bible says, 
He's actually called the Father. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which correct us, we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of what? Spirits. Doesn't say he's the Father of flesh. In fact, it tells you exactly the opposite. It says the children of the flesh are not. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Well, the man, Jesus Christ, is in the flesh. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Okay? And so the man, Jesus, who came, right, in a quote-unquote, the, the man, Jesus, who, who came, who was actually, yes, the son of man. That's why it's called the son of man. And, but he's saying, no, you're not the son of God by flesh. That's why it says, in Romans, it says, look, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, but look, and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead, right? Resurrection from the dead. God cannot die. He's without beginning of days or end of life. He's talking about the body of Christ. He's the savior of the body. And so we collectively are the body. Collectively, we're by one spirit. So we're the son of God by the, by the spirit. And we have what our father, God working in us to fulfill his good will and pleasure, right? So we're preaching the word that's come from God, that comes from what? The head. And there's one head. Okay? So that's what that's saying. Declare the Son of God according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Okay? So there's that. 12 minutes in. Now, the other thing I want to point out, point out is it says the following. No man calleth accursed okay. okay okay first Corinthians 12 3 wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God call it Jesus a curse right because there's there's Jesus who's the lamb who is our father right and he's God. He's without beginning of days or end of life, right? But he was made like unto the Son of God, but no, he's the Father, right? Then there's the body, which are the first fruits, okay? They're new creatures. They're created new spiritual creatures. They're creatures, right? Okay, but it says no man speaking by the Spirit of God call it Jesus a curse, right? No man speaking by the Spirit of God call it Jesus a curse, and no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. That's strange because there's all kinds of false people saying that Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. Right? So apparently he's saying, look, the words that you speak, he's like, the Holy Ghost gives you those words, right? To, to, to speak truth. Because if you don't believe, he says, you're just full of lies. Right? God's having no part. Light is having no part, no communion with darkness. And so he's saying, look, and no man can say that Jesus is the, is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. But listen to this. He's saying, look, it says, look, no man speaking by the Spirit of God call it Jesus accursed. But wait a minute. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the law, curse of curse of the law. Look, look, being made a curse for us. Now, you have a problem, Houston. You have the Bible telling you that, wait a minute, no one calls Jesus a curse. But then it's saying that he was made a curse. So I think you got to make a distinction here between the man Christ Jesus. Remember, because he came in the likeness of sinful flesh, right? He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. That was the man. He purged the law with his blood. Did that for every single human being alive. But you don't receive the spirit unless you're born again by the spirit. It's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life. The flesh profiteth nothing. He died for every man. Every man doesn't go to heaven because every man doesn't receive the spirit because as many as receive him gave him power to become the sons of God. And apparently when you receive him, you got to receive him by faith because it says he will appear. Look, let, me, let me show you. 
You got to see him by faith. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, right? So there's the man, Jesus Christ, the mediator between God and man. There's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. A mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. We have but one God, the Father. And unto them which look for him, right? Look for him. Shall he appear the second time? Wait a minute. Without sin, he was made to be sin for us. So is, is Jesus the same yesterday, today, forever? Wait a minute. Are you saying he's going to be, has he going to, the first time he had what? With sin, right? He was made to be sin for us. So is sin, can sin enter heaven? No. So he appears a second time without what? Flesh, right? He's up, you got to see him by faith, right? Because he, he he said when he came, he said, this is God in him. It was the veil of the flesh, right? You got to go through the veil. Let me see if I spell this right. Okay, no, I did not. By a new and living way, what he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, what? his flesh. God made a body. He made a fleshly body for himself, but God is not flesh. And, and that flesh that he had, which came from what? From Mary, that body, that flesh was of the flesh of Mary. And Mary was a sinner, right? Mary was a sinner. But that's why the Bible says, well, the Bible says clearly, that, um, actually, let me look up the Spirit of Christ. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of who? Christ, he is not of his. You're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. That's why it's called the Father of Spirits. We walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. I'm going to go ahead and end it now because my kids are going to come down. But I just want to show that. Look, all the sin and control of the glory of God when I was asked, what must I do to be saved? Was believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The gospel is Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the according to the scriptures. Look, to he that worketh not but believeth on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You were born again. You're born again by the Spirit. So the legal sin debt, purging of the law with his blood, that was the legal sin debt. He did that for every man. But every man doesn't go to heaven because every man is not born again because Christ died for them. Every man's born again because they believe and they get their spirit. It's the spirit that couldn't have to give his life to flesh, profit of nothing. So God is called the Father of Spirits. God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Must worship him in spirit and truth. The Trinity is a false doctrine. It's a lie. It's polytheism. It was invented by the Catholics to make God flesh so they can tell you that Jesus Christ is going to come back in the quote-unquote clouds because they don't understand the Bible, and they, they're expecting him to come back in a certain skin color, and they're going to, quote-unquote, try to rule and, quote, reign in that false place called Jerusalem. After Jesus Christ already told you, his kingdom is not of this world. It comes not with observation. It comes not with meat or drink. He's saying you got to see it by faith, all right? So you got to see it by faith. The last verse I'm going to give you. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Listen to this. For the things which are seen are temporal. So when you have people like Renee or who are Pastor Anderson or whomever saying, oh, we saw the we saw the dove and we knew Jesus and we heard the voice and all this kind of stuff. Well, those are signs and symbols. God's giving you those things as a sign. For the things which are seen are temporal. Those are temporary, right? God is not a dove, right? God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is the son of man that he should repent. Right? He doesn't change. Is Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever? He's God isn't a sinner. God can't die. God doesn't grow in knowledge. God's like, you know, God knows all these things. So the, your 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 God is a false God. And God's not flesh. He's not the flesh of David or Mary. Those, those guys are sinners and need to be new creatures. So how in the hell does that work? But the things which are not seen are eternal. Right? So you're gonna have to see it by faith. The substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not for not seen. So we who believe, we are not looking for the things which are temporal. We are looking for those things which are not seen, right? Because the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And so if it's not seen, it's eternal. And it's Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. Well, we have an eternal God, right? So you're not going to be able to see him um, in this world, in the flesh, until 
um, until, um, unless you see him by faith, right? He comes in, he's manifest in the flesh, but he's not flesh, right? He comes manifest in the flesh, but he's not flesh, right? And so the Bible says, who is an antichrist, but he that denied that Jesus Christ is present tense come in the flesh. He comes every day in his saints. It's God in me, right? Preach the word in season, not a season. It's God that worketh in you, right? The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We're supposed to be going out and it's Christ in us. And that's why it says, lo, I stand at the door and knock. As many as receive him gave you power to become the sons of God. So if the light's not in the world, then that means Jesus is not in us. And that means though we have our flesh, we go out and we're preaching the words, the words that we speak are spirit in their life. And we're telling people they got to receive them, right, by faith, right, in eternal life, in an eternal kingdom from an eternal God. And there is but one God, the Father. Praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.